Welcome back. In this video, we start section 3.4 on homogeneous linear systems. The goal of this section is to understand linear systems whose constant vector is the zero vector. Definition 3.4.1. A system of linear equations is called homogeneous if the constant term in each equation is equal to zero. Example 3.4.1. Planes that pass through the origin in R3. Consider the four planes, pi 1, which is 3x minus 2y plus z is equal to 0, pi 2, which is x plus y plus 2z is equal to 0, pi 3, which is 6x minus y plus z is equal to 0, and finally pi 4, which is x plus y minus z is equal to 0. Notice that in each of these equations, the constant term is 0. So in particular, if you think about plugging in for x, y, and z, it's obvious that each of these equations will be satisfied when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, and z is equal to 0. So we notice that 0, 0, 0 satisfies each of these equations and that the four planes are non-parallel. How do I know they're non-parallel? Well, it's because uh, the normal vectors of the planes aren't parallel with each other. For example, the normal vector for pi 1 is 3 minus 2, 1, and the normal vector for pi 2 is 1, 1, 2, so I can definitely tell that these aren't scalar multiples of each other. So I know that the planes aren't parallel to each other. So geometrically, what do I know? Well, I know that therefore the planes must either intersect at the single point, well, we already know one point of intersection, so it would have to be the single point 0, 0, 0, or their common intersection is going to have to be a line passing through the origin. And again, we can't have a plane of intersection because none of the planes are parallel. Okay, so let's move on to definition 3.4.2. Consider the homogeneous linear system in n variables. So here I have this linear system. But wait a minute, I missed something to the right-hand side of each equation here. I haven't put in the constants. But the fact that the linear system is homogeneous tells me that those constants all have to be 0. So let's fill those in first. So I have that the first equation has to be equal to 0, the second equation has to be equal to 0, all the way down to the mth equation, which also has to be equal to 0. So When you have this linear system of m equations, each and n variables, all of them with constant term 0, the solution 0, 0, 0, I have to keep writing a lot of zeros. So this is when x is x1 is equal to 0, x2 is equal to 0, x3 is equal to 0, all the way through xn is equal to 0. So that means here I have n zeros. So this solution is called the trivial solution. And that's because it sort of obviously satisfies each of those m equations. So let's look now at takeaway number two, which is that the trivial solution is a solution to every, to every homogeneous linear system. Therefore, every homogeneous linear system is consistent, which means it has at least one solution. And so it could either have only the trivial solution, exactly the zero solution, or it must have infinitely many solutions. If we want to say more, say about the geometry or how many parameters we would need to describe the solution set, we'll have to think a bit harder. But in general, every homogeneous linear system has either only the trivial solution or infinitely many solutions. We can be a, even a bit more precise. In theorem 3.4.1, we'd say the following. If a homogeneous linear system has n unknowns and the reduced row echelon form of its coefficient matrix has r leading entries, we'd say it's rank r, then the system must have n minus r free variables. So remember that any variable that doesn't have a leading entry in its column becomes a free variable. So if you have n variables and you only have r leading entries, this leaves us with n minus r free variables. Let's see how we can apply theorem 3.4.1 to an actual homogeneous system.
Example 3.4.2. The system x1 plus x2 plus x3 minus x4 equal to 0 and x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 equal to 0 has coefficient matrix. So here I'm just going to write down the coefficient matrix, which is 1, 1, 1, minus 1, and 1, 1, 1, 1. Notice that the theorem was stated just in terms of the coefficient matrix, so I don't even need to think about the augmented matrix. But just sort of as a side note, notice that if we did put in the actual coefficient matrix, nothing would really change because we would only have zeros to the right-hand side of the dotted line. So we'll go back to the coefficient matrix as we had before. And what we need to do is that in order to use the theorem, we need to make sure that the coefficient matrix is in reduced row echelon form, and actually row echelon form would be sufficient. But we'll take it to reduced row echelon form here. So when we reduce this, the first row operation that I'll do is row 2 minus row 1 is the new row 2, which gives me the matrix 1, 1, 1, minus 1, and then 1 minus 1 is 0, 0, 0, and 2. So to get to uh, reduced row echelon form, I should also scale row 2 by 1 half, giving me the augmented matrix 1, 1, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And finally, I'll do one more row operation. Row 1 plus row 2 is the new row 1, giving me finally in reduced row echelon form 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. OK, so the system has, well, let's see, four unknowns. Right, those are the variables, x1, x2, x3, and x4. And when I look at the reduced row echelon form, I can see that I have two leading entries. Notice that if I look back at just the row echelon form of the matrix, I also have two leading entries. Remember, that number is not going to change. So we could have actually stopped after one row reduction step, and we'd have the same theoretical result. Therefore, the homogeneous system must have 4 minus 2 is equal to 2 free variables.